also yeah. wanted to screen the film play. Um, I love this movie so much. And this time I want to introduce both the star of the film. She uh, was previously seen in Patty Case. Woo! She'll be seen later this year in her box. Uh, Opposite Santa Claus. She was also made one of Variety's 10 actors to watch last year. Um, and joining her is uh, someone who literally needs no introduction. Um, she's a recipient of the 47 Grammy nomination. She's yeah. composer of over 3,000 songs, a two time Academy Award nominee, a two time Emmy Award nominee, award nominee, actress, philanthropist, businesswoman. Please welcome Daniel McDonald and Dolly Parton. <laughs>
for Christina Aguilera, and I said, oh, yeah, I know that. And so, but anyway, we were not together. We were just going through the theme, but we were just so natural together. We were, uh, we both have had hard times in our lives. We were kind of rough in our own way and rowdy. She was a poor girl and had tough times in her childhood, but there was a rawness and a realness about us mm -hmm. and the way we saw music and felt it. And so when we started writing it together, it just felt so natural. So we were just going to write a few songs, but we didn't know what it should be. So we just kept writing one right after another, and we just kept going. And it, was, it just was really one of the greatest things that I've ever done. I've never worked with another, with a female producer. She produced the album. And I've never, I don't write songs with people usually. And so it just took all, and it was just meant to be, I think. So all of it kind of has fit together to make a real sweet thing. I hope people will enjoy it. All of it. Judy Hinges on the Cascade of Dumplin. And Danielle, you're you're always such a beautiful, wonderful presence on the screen. You're so perfect. There's a song in the movie. I don't know how much they played in the movie because I didn't get a chance to see it since all the music's been cut in. So but um, I know there's a song that I wrote based on the relationship between you and Jennifer, a uh, mom, daughter. It's called Push and Pull. Mm -hmm. So I brought Jennifer, Lynn, and I thought, well, we got to get them on it. So they came over to the studio, and she was just singing her little heart out. Oh. <laughs> it was good. And so Jennifer did good, too. Oh, Jen was great. I was terrified. Of I, course. Well, because I also found out the day before, I would like to find out. <laughs> and so I just got told to show up in the studio, and I had no idea you were going to be there. And we hadn't met yet. And I was about to go on a plane, so I was like, no makeup and like leggings. And I just looked like a mess. And I was in shock, and then I had to sing, and I'm, I'm not a singer. So. You, you were nervous, I have to sing this. And I kept saying, you don't have to do nothing, just open that mouth and sing it all over. You guys made it so much easier, though. Like, you and Linda were great, and Linda ended up coming into the studio and just playing guitar with me to help me like, get comfortable. And you were so positive, it, it really helped, yeah. But stick to your act, you know. You can work that hard if you do a country singer. <laughs> Did they go through a typical audition pro uh, process? Uh, Patty Cakes had just come out at the time, and so um, our director had seen it, and our producers had seen it, and Jen saw it, and I, I basically met, I met Jen, and I met uh, everyone involved. I had like a three-hour lunch with our director, and I kind of just kept having meetings until it happened, I, I guess. I, I don't know. That was the first time that it really happened, so it was a completely new process for me. And uh, it was also kind of intimidating not doing a traditional casting mm -hmm. for it because I knew I really related to the character and I loved it and I really liked to play it, but you're always terrified that you're going to do it. You're like, well, they haven't actually seen me do the fact that what if I'm going to do that? And it was a little nerve wracking, but it was cool. I mean, it's always so auditions, you're auditioning the director as well, so there's comfort in knowing you auditioned for a part. Yeah, yeah, there is comfort in it, and then all of a sudden that comfort was taken away. And you kind of feel like, oh, how cool would it be just to be like off the roll without auditioning? And then you get out and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Actually, Dolly, I'm curious, have you ever had to audition for a part? Because I, I assume people cast you. Oh, sure, if you have to audition yeah. for lots of things, yeah. Well, it depends. I'm not a, for movies. I can only play one thing. That's me. <laughs> I, just, like, I never. Really, I don't consider myself an actress, and I only yeah. take roles that I actually feel like I can be myself in. I still make notice if I hadn't been a singer, I'd been a musician. So that was not out of character for me. And uh, in nine to five, that was kind of a little different because I'd never been a secretary. I made a better whore, the best little whore. <laughs>
say, oh, you're just playing yourself. That's actually the hardest thing to do. Well, you know, no, it's not me. Because if you're a singer, uh, you know, because I act out my, my songs. When I sing, I, I kind of express that. I tell my stories, and I feel like I'm acting the song. So when I did 95, I was really nervous, because not only that, I had never even seen a movie made, much less be in one. And I thought, well, it's Jimmy Fonda, and you know, really fun. And I thought, well, that's big, you know, that's big doings there. And I was a little nervous at that point because I didn't know whether I could act or not. And somebody said, well, just be yourself. I thought, well, I can do that. So when you talk to them, when they ask you something, even if it's in the script, just answer it like you would if somebody asked you that. And so that's kind of what I did. And Jane was really helpful, and so was Lily as far as making me stand on the marks and all that. I remember I was so nervous. She talked about being nervous. I was so scared more about that than the act, the talking part, just not knowing where to turn, how to get your right to ride, and you know, hitting your marks and causing people to have to take the time. But anyway, you just do, you just learn as you go. But as far as the acting part, I just kind of, did what they said. They said something, I said it back the way I said it. <laughs> uh, so I have like a little murmuring in the audience because I think people are figuring out that Danielle is not American. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, where are you from? I'm from Sydney, Australia. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 Australia. Yeah. I knew that. <laughs> I found that out when you were at the scene. <laughs> 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 I'm curious, um, did, you have, did you work with a dialect coach and how did you, you so embody sort of middle America youth in this, um, you know, was there any special research you did for that? Um, it, it was kind of, it was this accent, I had uh, like four sessions with a dialect coach right before I went on a press tour for Patty Cakes. And so when I was doing that, everyone keeps asking me to do a Jersey accent. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm trying to go on Southern right now. Like, that's really confusing. <laughs> and then I, I went straight to set after that. So I only kind of had like a week or two, wow. um, which wasn't that long with it. And that's obviously terrifying. But um, like Maddie, one of our cast members is from Texas. So I was like, oh, listen to you a lot. And Luke is from Nashville. So they kind of, they all had, um, they all have really good accents. So I was just really trying to practice all the time while I was on set. And uh, our first AD is from Texas. And, and what I got wrong, he's like, again. Yeah. And he's super deadpan, so he would really double light at me. And it was like, there were a couple words I still remember, like, the word drawing. Like, we had to do that so many times. Like, yeah, I had, I had a bit of trouble, but I, I don't know. It's just something that you're trying to body when everyone else is doing the accent around you, it really helps. Were you happy when it was over? Did it match your accent, or did you carry your Texas accent back to Australia? Did you went back? It's certainly like it's a kind of fun place to sit. Um, lot, like I and I saw this the other day, um, which was terrifying, kind of the best time I completed. And me and my roommate went to Target just to buy some stuff, and for some reason, it just like I was in the accent. Tell me how you ordered it. Say it. <laughs> what did you say in your text with accent? I don't know. We were just talking the whole time like this. And, uh, <laughs> we just were doing it, and she started doing it too. And everyone was kind of looking at us, and we were being a little bit cautious. <laughs> I <laughs> I actually, as a teenager, listened to a lot of your music. So when they had all the songs, I was like, well, I already know all these. Because they're like, you need to learn all these songs because you're going to be singing along with them. And we were going like, well, that's the one part I don't have to do. Yeah. Which was oh, great. Good. It was really great. And then there were a few songs that I didn't know when I got to learn. And I, I think the most was I didn't necessarily know about like all the quotes and everything. I, I was like, oh wow, I didn't I didn't know this. So that was really cool. I got to kind of find out more about you and what you stand for and it's incredible. Well it's good. I have a lot of fans in Australia. You know, I, we go you do. a lot. You do. Yeah. I have the country when we go there, but I love Australia. We got a lot of good country fans there and I've been popular there for a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to talk specifically about the song you wrote, Girl in the Movies. Yeah. Um, which you performed earlier today. I was lucky enough to see it. It's 
so amazing. Um, can you kind of talk about, like, was it after seeing the movie you were inspired to write that and sort of the process? Well, I took this, like I mentioned before, I told Linda, we've got to see this movie before we start trying to write. So I see the script and I read the book, but still, I wanted to see you and I wanted to see the people because I write from feel. You know, not from just somebody telling me to do something. I didn't want everything to be just blatantly right on the money. I just wanted it to feel right and to kind of play off of everybody's emotion and everybody's personality and characters. So I saw the movie and I just pictured her little character going to the movies like like it's more it was like the big picture of life and like the, the movies would kind of represent like life and the big screen that we you know kind of portray ourselves on. And also with the beauty, the glamour and the with her mom and the and the contest, you know, that they do. And I just pictured her though in her lonely self without her Aunt Lucy, I pictured her going to the movies, spending tons of money on, you know, just watching people thinking, I could be that, I would be that someday. I could, you know, I'm gonna be that, you know, whatever that girl is, I've been that. I'm tired of people shattering my dreams and splattering my tears and, you know, doing all that. So anyway, I just wanted to make it kind of, cause it was a movie and it was, you know, yeah. and I just thought it would be a sweet little thing to write about. For those of you who don't know the lyrics, it talks about, I'm not going to make you say No, that's so. right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it starts out with, yeah, no, no, I can't say it like this. Wait a minute, it's hard. But it starts yeah. out, it starts out, somebody said, when we first started writing it, it starts out with uh, popcorn, soda, box of raisinets. And then Linda said, you're going to write popcorn in a song? I said, yeah. I said, and velvet cushion seats and soft armrests. Best seat in my favorite movie house. I start my dreaming as the lights go out. And up on the silver screen, I picture me living out my passions, hopes, and fantasies. Cause I wanna be the girl in the movie, the one with the stars in her eyes. She gets the role she chooses. She can laugh or she can cry. Standing in her glory, telling her story. Happy ever after, I want to be the girl in the movie. Then there's a part where she like says, <laughs> music and it just kind of felt like someone had 
regret in everything that I was feeling inside in that moment and put it in a song and I was it was really embarrassing actually. Well I was just very honored. Crying. I felt like I'd done my job and that's what I wanted to see you on the screen. I wanted to feel you. I wanted to get what I thought you were feeling. Oh and you did. <laughs> <laughs> and then we both did our job. I love that the the story was inspired by your music and then the movie of it inspired you to write music. Oh, well I know it's just funny how it happened, you know, it's great though that that all worked in like that. And I have to tell you, speaking of Jennifer, she she is such a pro. Love her to death. And she played such a great part. You're, didn't you think she did great then? I think she's awesome. And, you think, and she's, such, she's so great to work with as a producer. She really, she really is a pro. And she's so understanding and so accepting and so giving. And I really felt like that it was a great honor to see her in a different role than just the acting and just being pretty Jennifer when everybody loves my husband was more excited. Working <laughs> <laughs> with Jennifer Aniston than, than it was that, you know, but I was about to be in the movie or I saw the story. He kept saying, well, how was Jennifer? How was Jennifer? I said, well, she's everything you think she is and more. But she was just a real pro and she, was, she had really done a great job on this. Your guys' relationship is so wonderful in this movie, and um, as someone who grew up watching Jennifer Aniston, I, th I think I would be almost as intimidated as I would be by having Dolly Parton's music <laughs> in my movie. Definitely. Uh, it was kind of a very, very surreal experience, and um, it, I, I don't know, we, we met up at her house the first time I met, and I was terrified, and I was like shaking, and she just kind of gave me a big warm hug, and I was like, oh. <laughs> like, she's a little nicer. She just makes you feel very warm and welcome instantly, and that was really, really cool. And then we just we like had dinner when we were shooting, and we I went to her house a couple of times just to get to know her, and um, it meant that as soon as we got on set together, we were able to just relax into it. And, you know, she's really as as actors in the room, I'm sure you can relate, but there was a lot of looking at spots on cameras in this because in like all the close-ups. And Joan would be like, okay, well, wait, how can I, how can she see me? Like, can I just do a sliver of an eye? And she, like, hammered her head into, like, the corner of the camera just so that I could act with her, which wow. um, is a really amazing thing and very giving. So it was great working with her. Did you know she had a dog named Dolly Parton? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see her? Oh, yeah, I met the dog. Years ago, when I first met Jennifer the first time, I was in a restaurant with my, my ex well, not ex, but my manager, Sandy Gallon, who's passed away now last year. But anyway, we used to go to the same restaurant, so the first time that, or the first time I saw her, she came over and introduced herself. This was many years ago. And she said, I have a little, I love your music, and I, I have a little dog, and I named her Dolly Parton. <laughs> I said, I guess, is that a compliment, right? <laughs> she said, no, I love her. She's blonde, and she's little, so... Like you, I went up to, to Jennifer's house when we first started talking about doing the movie. We went up to talk about all the business in, and I said, what is Dolly Parton's story? <laughs> and she said, she is. So this beautiful little blonde dog came through, and I said, well, she, she's a white dog. She said, that's one of the reasons I named her Dolly, because she was blonde. But she still has her, so wow. And I thought that was cute. So I said, what are you going to say? Dolly, get out of the bowl. Dolly, get out of the bowl. Dolly, get out of the bowl. Don't you go my road. Why <laughs> did you mention that you, you know, didn't think you should act in this movie? But well, you could have played one of the Dolly drag queens. Well, I'm a kid, and I love the drag queens, by the way. I'm so honored. Yeah, I have such a huge gay following. We've done proud of all of them. And a lot of drag queens, you know, dressed up like me. But uh, they asked me to be in the movie, but I felt like it's too self-serving because it was enough about me already. And I was happy to do the music, but I didn't feel like it was right for me to be in it or be involved in any other thing other than the music. Yeah. Well, I mean, just the music alone is yeah. such a huge contribution. It's so great. Uh, we're going to take a couple quick questions from the audience. Um, if you have one, just raise your hand. We can start right here. My name is Dave Moskowitz. It's an honor for see you in person and the film was fabulous I absolutely loved it from Sean Beck. Quick question for Dolly and also for yourself. I want to know if it was hard for you, Daniel, uh, to get a grasp of the pageant culture in, in the States, being that you're from Australia, and Dolly, wondering what your assessment is on the music business in 2018 versus you know, when you've come up in the ranks. Ooh. 
Um, I I didn't really know the pageant. I don't even know if there is a pageant culture in Australia. Oh, so I'm, I'm sure there is. I didn't really know it. So I think coming into it, all I had really knew of pageant culture was in film. So it was mostly American anyway. Um, I think the one thing we did want to do was judge the pageant culture because that's kind of what this movie does is um, these, these girls kind of figure out who they are and they realize that it's actually been a very positive time for them in the pageant. And um, on set, there were you know, six of us girls from like six different places and you never know how putting six girls together is going to go. Um, and we just, it was crazy. Like there were tears in like a very good way. And like a really supportive, um, like we had to do the swimsuit scene. We're all like, ah, and we're all just like, no, it's great. Go out there, and it was so positive. And and I feel like that is really a lot of what um, when we're talking to some kind of girls, they were saying, you know, it, it really gave them kind of friends and community, and actually helped their self esteem, and that's kind of amazing. And how the music business has changed. Well, it has changed a great deal. Yeah, I remember I've been at this a long, long time. I've been at this music business so long that we used to go into the old RCA recording studios, and that's when they had sessions with my bands, and you'd have like a session from 10 to 1, and then like they'd have like 10, 10 to 1, and then in the afternoon they'd have another. So sometimes we would go in the studio and record a whole album in three hours. With live band, and it hardly, it's a lot of times we used to just do the, the live vocals. But anyhow, just the music business in general has changed on the business end, the way you sell music, the way you present it. I'm just glad that I made it when I did, because I don't know that I would make it now, because we're trying to change new laws with all the social media and ways to get paid for the music that you do and the stuff that you write. And there's still got a lot of ways to go with that, but it's, it's just amazing now how the music business is so completely different from when I started. But I'm just glad I'm still around. I came from the dark ages into the new age. <laughs> really, I did, you know, it, truly. But anyway, I'm just glad I'm still able to be part of all these important things with these other people. Yeah. Uh, okay, did I mention the band was there? Oh, I see one Somebody way Somebody back there. <laughs> Thank you. Danielle, you were incredible. Um, I just, the chemistry you had with the male lead, I think his name's Luke. Did you have chemistry readings with different actors and, and when he was cast, did you, were you guys friends? Like, how did you work that relationship and building that chemistry with him? Because it was really electric. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, no, Luke, Luke got cast without me i i wasn't even really in town uh um, in pre-production so i kind of flew straight to atlanta met everyone there um and our director kind of said with all the chemistry um she she like got a girl to play my best friend and a girl to, and a guy to play my boyfriend she's like i think you're gonna love him i hate him but either way you're gonna have great chemistry with him. <laughs> and she was right like her day is still a very good friend of mine she's the sweetest thing in the world and luke and i just clicked instantly um which you get really lucky when that happens we actually met at a costume fitting and we were like Okay, and the costume, <laughs> head of costume is just like, I want to get a photo with you too. And she's very like, she, she's European and she's very um, just direct and kind of deadpan. And we were like, okay, and she's like, close up, close up. And we are like, okay, just, let's just break it in right now. And I don't know, we, we shot all of, all of my scenes with Luke first, so that was the very first thing we did. Um, so it was kind of a good way to get into the movie we were joking around on set at all times he's he's really great and very easy to get along with so i really believe that relationship so much that i wondered if you dated him really he was so good not no well you should i told him that's so much better i know but i would <laughs> on December 7th, so you can watch it again and again and again. But there's also um, the soundtrack coming out on November 30th. Yes, yeah, so the soundtrack comes out the 30th, the single is the 2nd, and then I guess the premiere is, is the 7th of December of the movie, and I uh, know the premiere is the 6th, and it says, and I think it's coming on that place on the 7th, yeah. I think that's the way it comes. 
And you want to do some collaborations with like Sia and Katy Perry? Yes, actually, not Katy. Katy didn't sing on this album. But uh, Linda Perry. You got her mixed up. I did too. I always said the wrong thing because I know Katy Perry uh, very well. She's very cute. We had them. We did sing Jolene together on the show last year. That's probably what it was. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, with Sia, uh, we did a song called Here I Am on the soundtrack album. And L. King, we did a song called Holding On To You. Both of those were old songs that came from my old catalog back when I was a young girl. And uh, so we, and we redone them and they turned out really good. And we worked with Macy Gray on Two Doors Down. And Dorothy, girl, she was also on that. But my, one of my favorite things on the whole album, I got to sing with Mavis Staples. I love oh, yeah. the singer. I always thought that Mavis and Coach Reddy were always my favorite soul singers. And when they started having all these young girls, all these new people, which I was honored that I could sing and kind of stay up to date, you know. But, and so I said, well, can I pick somebody I want? So I wrote a song that kind of reminds me of the old, uh, songs that the Staples family used to sing. And so I, I said, well, can somebody find Mavis Staples for me? And they said, oh, she's old. Uh, she probably is not even singing. I don't even know if she's still alive. I said, trust me, I'm old too. And I'm still working. She's alive. She's still more working, trust me. I know if she is gone. So sure enough, they looked her up and she was in Europe on tour. And I said, well, when you come in, and she did, and she was so great. It's one of my favorite tracks, if not my favorite personal one on the whole album. So uh, that was a fun thing. Of course, I got to sing with Alison Krauss and uh, Rhonda Vincent on one of the songs. But we had, we kind of flavored it up a little bit. But it was, it was fun getting to sing with all the new girls and some of the old ones. And so we got a good, good soundtrack album, I think. I'm real proud of it. And I'm real proud of Linda Perry, too. I can't say enough about how hard she's worked and how good she is and what a good producer and how she made it easy. Like you were saying, all the different ones making it easy for you. I've been, I mean, I've been at this a long time, but I let her have it, you know, because she had, I didn't have to tell her what to do. I had, a, you know, I always have ideas on certain things, but she really picked a good band, as I mentioned. She knew what she was doing, and I thought, well, I'll bother somebody if they're doing good. You don't need to just do it because you can. So anyway, I think out of that, there was a lot of mutual love and harmony and just, just good feelings that made this album special, too. I honestly don't know which I'm more excited for, um, <laughs> the movie or the album, but luckily we'll have them both soon. I want to thank you guys so much for being here. Is Lana Montrose here? Lana, they just tripped you. Oh. To meet you. I wanted to get a picture with you guys. Oh, Is she somewhere else? Yes, they're yeah, bringing her up. Oh, great. Well, the reason I said that, uh, just so you uh, there's a uh, Lana Montrose yeah. used to always be my stand in on all the movies that I've ever done. That's since 9 to 5, and. Uh, and uh, the best of the whorehouse, and well, everything I've done. Lana was my uh, my girl because she's a great actress herself, and she's been in some things. But we just became great friends, and she hurt her back or spine or something. She's in a wheelchair now. Yeah. But anyway, I thought that they said she's on the first row, and I couldn't see very good from here. But anyway, I wanted to see her. That's why I brought that up. So thanks for she's you know, Yeah, I'll right get now. to see her later. But anyway, are we done? Okay. <laughs>